Greetings friends, it's Denise again with Denise's Dancing Paintbrush and today I have another fairy tale from my alphabet fairy tale book. This one is called The Last of the Thunderbirds, an Eskimo folk tale. And so I'll jump right in. In ancient times, in the far north, there lived many giant eagles, or thunderbirds as the Eskimo called them. They made their nests on top of mountains and great rocky crags from which to see all the land and rivers below them. They could swoop down and seize a reindeer or a bear and would sometimes steal a fisherman right along with his boat off the water to feed their young. Only the most daring would venture onto the river to fish because of these great thunderbirds. One day, a brave warrior was headed out to check his many traps by the water, and he warned his pretty mother before leaving to stay inside. It was a dangerous time when the Thunderbirds were feeding their young. After he left, his mother thought that she should fetch some water to make a stew while her son worked. She ventured out with her water jar and then heard the sound of swooping wings all before it was too late. The Thunderbird had caught her up in his talons and carried her away. The villagers wailed and cried at the loss, and when the young warrior returned, they told him how the bird had taken his pretty mother away. Without a word or a tear, the young warrior went into his empty house and got down his bow and his war arrows. The villagers tried to tell him not to go after the birds. You'll be eaten too. What use is it to sacrifice your life? Your mother is gone. But nothing could dissuade him from his cause. He slowly climbed the great mountain until he reached the top where the nest was. All the older birds were out hunting, but the young fledglings were there in the nest and shrill screeching, they waddled toward him. He stood and let arrow after arrow fly until all the hateful fledgling birds were dead. And then he hid behind some bare bones to wait for the adult birds to come home. With vengeance in his heart, he didn't have long to wait. The first of the parent birds cried from across the river and flew to the quiet, bloody nest. The parent birds raged, looking for who had killed their young. The young warrior stepped out from behind the bones and began firing arrow after arrow at the mother birds. and. She came roaring down toward him, and he sent an arrow into her throat, killing her dead. Next, the father bird was circling overhead and raged, and came at the warrior who ducked behind the bare bones so that the great thunderbird missed him and only grabbed some old bones with his talons. As he flew away, the warrior jumped out and sent two war shafts into the father bird's wings. Screeching in rage, the father bird floated away toward the Northland and was never seen again. The young warrior found many necklaces and bracelets among the bones in the bottom of the nest. And finally, he found the ring that his mother wore and taking it to the river's edge, he placed it in a boat and set the boat on fire to honor her ghost and give her rest. Kind of a gruesome story, but many fairy tales are. And I think that the little warrior was very brave to even try going after these great birds. They were that big. 
big enough to carry off a bear. As you can see in my collage, I'm using many colors of different pieces of paper in the, the furry hood that he's wearing um, so that it has a real fluffy feel to it. I tore all the pieces so they'd have ragged edges just as fur would have. This is the part that took the longest, tearing all those tiny pieces of paper and placing them all on, layering them so that they looked like they, um, if you petted them, they'd all go one direction. <laughs> That's the thing about light. All the colors of the spectrum are in the light. And so most things will actually have all the colors of the spectrum. Even your skin will have a little bit of green and purple and, and blue tones to it, as well as red and orange and yellow. So when I'm working with these little pieces of paper, since I can't blend them, I can mix them. Putting one next to another so it fools your eye into thinking it's all very light and fluffy. To do this, I've used lots of reference photos um, researching children in various poses, especially with bows and arrows. I finally found a, a good stock photo um, from Pixabay of a boy with a bow and arrow. I liked the pose, so I used that reference for the pose and then used an Eskimo child for the face. As I do in many of these, I hid some pictures in it. You'll find um, there's a, a black man, there's a, a leaf, a face, a bald eagle, and a swooping golden eagle all hidden in this collage. Sometimes finding just the right piece is difficult. <laughs> and so there it is, finally. I hope you enjoyed my story. I hope you enjoyed my collage. And I hope you subscribe. Check out some of my links below. And do come again. I appreciate everyone who checks me out. Thank you so much. Bye now. Thank you.